The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, I'd like to welcome everyone back to another KevCam night class tonight. Tonight, have Brendan helping out with any questions or concerns, and uh, Brendan is back with us again. And it's God, is it good to have you back, Brendan? Are you there with us? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, broadcasting from New England as uh, as before, and yeah, how are you guys doing? How's everybody going? Uh, doing out there? Doing good, doing good, and uh, as well to make sure I'm staying on cue and getting uh, not skipping over everything. I got Greg to uh, help out as well. Yep, providing a warm body that allows us to say we're going coast to coast, matching <laughs> right. uh, my West Coast with uh, Brendan's New England this evening. Yeah, and then uh, myself and smack dab in the middle of you guys. All right, so I do see. Um, a lot of current names in there, so I won't go through the boring uh, intro. So what we are, tonight's will be a little bit uh, shorter, but uh, tonight we are going to be covering the toolbox cycles, a part two of kind of going through these. And um, this actually, uh, one of these in here is probably one that I use uh, quite a bit, but uh, I'll kind of show you through the second part of these. And for those of you guys who weren't here last week, um, in the in the toolbox cycles, we covered all the top operations that are up here. So now in part two, we'll cover the second row, part three, third row, and so on. So with that being now, said, Kevin, yeah. Uh, for the guys that weren't here last week, uh, where can they find the video for the uh, first oh, row yeah. toolbox cycles? Great point. So. If you guys weren't here last week, if you guys come over to the Solid Cam University channel or type in KevCam, my ugly mug should pop up for you and you guys can see the toolbox cycles uh, right here covering that first part. So, as well as if those of you guys that are interested during the day and didn't know about this, uh, we do offer a free uh, half hour uh, training every day at two o'clock Eastern time. Um, if you would like to sign up for that, you guys can come over and I'll just get right to the solid cam homepage here. Make sure you got the American flag up on top. Go to webinars and upcoming webinars. And you'll see the solid cam live for huh, June 4th. But the uh, the June 4th is actually the same registration link that's going to go through the entire month of June. So. Definitely come check that out as well. All right, so what we're going to start off with today is about as basic as it can go. So, with these toolbox cycles, like I said, it is, or last week, that it is basically a profile operation or a pocket operation that has been simplified down to make it very easy for you to program. So, first thing we're going to start off with is just a closed slot. It doesn't get much simpler than this. Now for our geometry, definitely make sure you guys have the smart face turned on because with the smart face technology here, I can just select the floor and it's automatically gonna chain everything that it needs for that toolbox cycle as well as the correct direction for us. Now, when I grab it off that smart face as well, it's automatically picking up my uh, depth for that slot as well. So for this particular one, I do have a tool that is size on slot or rate on size. So, which is a 12 millimeter. And we can come to our levels and you can see that our level is already put in there, but if we wanted to make this fully associative, we can grab our upper level as well as our lower level. So if our part was to change, those levels would automatically update for us. Technology, like I said, very simplified and very easy to get through. So basically it's asking me how much do I want to do as a step down. Now it's going to do this as a vertical ramp coming into the slot, but we can set it up as full depth, which is the 393. And if I get a zoom in here and let's do a wireframe. You can see it's starting at the top, doing a vertical ramp down and doing a full slot with. So if we get top view, 
you can kind of see that in action right there. Now, if we want to, in our link section, nothing in here except for the option for pre-drill. So um, as we know, the doing slots is very hard on end mills. Um, if you guys have a open end slot, meaning that um, it's not a blind slot, you can use a drill functionality and pre-drill all these. So then you don't have to worry about it. And what it will actually do is the end mill will drop straight down in there and without doing that ramp. Now, if we switch our step down to something smaller here, maybe a hundred thou, you can see it does a nice zigzag pattern working its way down. So for every movement that is going across the slot is going to be coming down a hundred thou. So if we have really hard material, we can even go smaller. And we can see that we have a very fine zigzag slot going down in there. Um, you can set a floor offset if you would like. And then what you could do is come back with a finishing tool. Um, like if you're coming in here with a uh, high-end rougher or like a corn cob uh, rougher, you can uh, put a floor offset and then come back and do a finishing as well. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like. So we'll get zoomed in here. And hold that one a little fast. So you can see it's doing its 10th out pass, just working its way back and forth. So like I said, very simplified operation here, but um, it has eliminated any of the, um, the, the other clutter that would be in there. For you. Now, Kevin, does this have to be on center line, or um, what if you had wanted to finish with a uh, smaller tool? Would you rough out with the toolbox cycle and then finish with a profile tool yes. or, or a profile operation? Yep. But with this um, toolbox cycle here, it is looking at the entire profile. So even if I went with something smaller here, and let's do that, we'll create a uh, quarter inch end mill here and save and calculate. So it's telling me that the geometry needs to have two arcs with a tool radius of 125. So with this, uh, one thing I forgot to say is with this closed slot, your end mill does need to be right on size. Now to kind of go with Greg's point is if we went with a smaller tool, and then came back with the, even a larger tool to finish it up. Then instead of doing a closed slot, we would want to do uh, kind of like what we were talking about yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, last Tuesday, do like the additional zigzag slot um, or doing a uh, just a simple slot that way. Because this way it is set up so to use a smaller tool where this closed slot is set up to do rate on size with the end mill. So we have a six millimeter radius down there. And obviously with a quarter inch, it's not big enough. So if I go back and change it to my 12 millimeter, it'll accept it and put it right in there. So. Hey, Kevin, if I can just uh, jump in here super quick, just for uh, just a, uh, a quick housekeeping item. Uh, there is a questions pane or a questions area at the end of the uh, the GoToMeeting uh, menu. So if anybody has a question as we move forward, you know, please feel free to put those in there. Uh, I'll monitor those questions and then we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, so there is our close slot. Now, this one is um, one that I can't say that I've ever used, but I'm gonna show you a couple different options um, with this one. And this one is more driven towards doing, uh, if you have a part or a pocket that is a spline, um, we can come in here and do a spline slot. And we'll go ahead and grab our geometry here. And like I said, by clicking on the smart face, it, it gets the geometry that is only needed. 
and we'll just go with that same tool as what we used before here. Level, we can make this fully associative here by grabbing our levels. And technology, so as it sits right now, I have what's called the spline tolerance here. So basically it is going to stay within this 118 thou of the spline. So if I go and save and calculate this, you can see that our tool path is definitely uh, going outside of that, or is uh, within that boundary, but we don't, obviously don't want that tool going out there. So if we make this a smaller number here, it will bring our geometry into where it's gonna cut there. Now, I, I, wanna, I wanna teach you guys about this, but I wanna give you, I, what I would say is my best opinion as well as Greg's opinion on this. Um, there's a couple things that I see that um, I think would be a little bit easier for everyone um, to go about. So we still have our step down here and we can do this as, you know, 100 thousand step down. So we we're taking it in multiple passes, but let's see, let me zoom in here and get a little side shot. So we're coming in there. And it's ending in a spot. Let me see if I can pause this and I'll single step it through here. So you can see it came in there and then came back out to finish what was left over on this side. You can see kind of what's going on right there. There's a little leftover piece. And it's going around, finished cleaning that, but it also ends the end mill right on top of, so let me do top down, and you can see the end mill is ending right there. And it's not, we don't get the control to move it back. Now, the end mill comes back over here to go to the next step down, and I'll kind of show you that here, is we do have an extension here. And let me put this back at, let's just do one inch. So we can see that we're starting, oops, settle down most. We're starting out here, but then we're ending with that end mill. I can't do it. Uh, right, right on top of the part where we're not gonna get a good cleanup of what's going on there. Now, the nice thing is it is coming right through the center, coming out, and then clean in this side with this side, but I still don't like that whole area uh, that it's doing right there. And we don't have any control over that. Um, but I think in my personal opinion, and Greg, I want you to speak up as well, is instead of doing that one as a spline toolbox cycle, I'd much rather see you guys do this like as a pocket operation. So if we go ahead and open up the pocket, we'll grab that same face and let's just grab that same tool grab our levels oops now Kevin this is one that uh, I'm not used to using um, is it dependent upon spline geometry at all yeah and or this was all built with spline geometry um, but it, it's still, see, I, and maybe I just don't know much about the, the spline technology here, but to me, doing this pocket operation of what we're doing here, if we take it all in one pass, is a much better tool path than breaking it up to something like this. So if we kind of compare back and forth, you can see the tool path is basically the same coming through here. It's just our start and end. Now we have the option to extend that out farther. So we're starting and ending off of the part where over in the toolbox cycle, we don't get that option to extend it out there. And I guess, Greg, what would you think? I mean, are we kind of looking at it as you'd rather see it, this done as a pocket operation versus the spline or? Hey, just 
the knee-jerk reaction from not uh, using this point operation as much as I uh, probably should. I, I feel more comfortable with the pocket operation and the control that you have. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering if this is intended for something that is meant to be for like import models or something where yeah. the geometry is not going to be as clean as what uh, we see on the screen. And for those of that weren't able to uh, translate the, uh, the little bit of muffled there, uh, so <laughs> um, what Greg is saying is if we got brought in with the uh, a complete spline and maybe uh, on this particular one, the pocket worked or the uh, profile operation worked, but traditionally it wouldn't work. Um, so I think that's what uh, Greg was saying. <laughs> But hopefully everybody understands kind of what we're we're getting at there. Um, if you do run across this, uh, having your geometry, uh, and it, it, it is getting a little funky, definitely uh, come check out the uh, toolbox cycle with the the spline right there. Now, the next one is one of my absolute favorite ones that I love in inside here. Uh, the toolbox cycle. It is called the four nubs or temporary bridges, sorry. So what we're looking for is the temporary bridges works really good if you are possibly um, cutting out a big slug from a plate and your part is in the center of this plate. Uh, well, let's, we'll, we'll kind of do this as representation here. Here's your part and here is the plate. And obviously, if we were to come in here and do a profile, as that end mill gets around to that last section, usually what's going to happen is this square piece would turn sideways as it's end milling and get bound up in there and break our end mill and wreck our part. So to combat that, what you can do is with these temporary bridges. Now, these temporary bridges, if you think outside the box a little bit, um, if you guys are using toe clamps as well, so if you had a clamp sitting across here, you could actually use your uh, the temporary bridges and go over that clamp also. So let me show you what we're looking at here. So we're grabbing our geometry that we want to cut. And we'll go ahead and grab our end mill here. and get this associative here now in here you have a couple different options so um you know we can do our step downs so let's say we're cutting some harder material we want to do 100 well let's do 50,000 step downs okay now starting at the top sorry um do we want the tool side left right or centered and our step downs here now the bridges so right now, as it sits, it will automatically throw four bridges equally spaced around the part. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, well, I'll show you the difference there um, versus the manual. So we have, we're telling it that we want four temporary bridges that are in there. My bridge width is set to 0.236, but maybe I just want 125 thou there to hold that part in there. Now I can also control the thickness of that bridge. So let me just save and calculate here. And you can see, um, let's do this in a simulation. Might be a little better. So you can see that center part is being held on by these temporary bridges. Well, maybe on this particular one, I don't need to be holding on with that much material because then I have to come back with a hacksaw and hacksaw off and do some grinding and finishing off where the, that got left off. But what you can also do, let me hop out of here, is tell it that, all right, maybe I only need 100 thou to hold that part in there if we were running like on a vacuum fixture. So now let's go ahead and play this through. So you can see it's fully machining all the way down till it's leaving that 100 thou there. And you can see that it's leaving those temporary bridges there. We can kind of see, get you a good view there. And I can come in here and just 
verify that all right all those blue pieces are being left over there so now what you can also do is we can go to the manual mode and i can tell it that all right i would like a bridge right here at that point and at this point right here accept that saving calculate and now it's just throwing those two bridges there now if i really need to get precision on where some of this is being uh where these bridges are being applied i can come in here and do a sketch and we can just say all right a sketch point there and a sketch point there so now exit on my sketch i can go to bridge positions delete all and I can grab that physical sketch point that I created on there. So now if we simulate this, now I have those two spots there holding in my part. So now um, if you, at this point, if you wanted to cut it off or do whatever, or like I said before, if you guys are using this as toe clamps, so let's say, that, all right, I had my toe clamps there. And let's go back to the thickness at 0.5. I need to simulate this again here. So now I had my toe clamps sitting across here or some kind of clamp sitting across there. So now for my second op, I'm gonna move my clamps over here and I would like just to finish off those bridge areas right there. So what I can do is make a copy of exactly what I just did there. And I can tell it that remove only bridges. So now if I come in here and do a simulate, you can see that my bridges are still there. Now if I play this through, it's wiping out those bridges. And as well, I can come in there and I can tell it, you know, um, you know, maybe I want it to do, um, you know, step down and stuff like that. But what I'll do is come in there and completely wipe out where that bridge was being left over. So this is one that, like I said, this is probably, this came up in the Solid Chem Live class. A uh, question came up for Mark and I, what's one of our favorite or list the top three favorite operations inside Solid Chem? This is one of them. Um, just because I can use clamps in here. Um, at my old work, we used to use vacuum tables um, as well as large uh, jig plates. And this way I don't have that piece floating around in there. Um, I don't have to come through and create a bolt hole and bolt this down. Um, it can all be done right inside of the uh, temporary bridge operation. So, yeah, me, and yeah, Kevin, if I can, yeah. if I can just jump in there super quick, I mean, that's that is so convenient. I mean, think about it. You know, there's no second setup. There's all you have to do is, you know, essentially, yeah, just kind of move a clamp around. You're all done. You know, no reprogramming. It's it's yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, like I said, this is uh, it's it's a fun one, and you know, I I don't know how. Um, I don't want to say how other cam systems do it, but from the customers that have switched over from other cam softwares into solid cam, they were telling me what they would have to do is come in here and do a sketch. And what they would have to right. do is tell it that, all right, from right here to right here, I want a line and from right here to right here to right there, and let's skip that bridge area. So you guys can see that there's a lot of um manual stuff that you guys would have to come in here and we'll just do it as this where now i can use that as geometry and they would have to select that as geometry where this is all done for you you can like i said you can pick the option where it automatically does the bridges for you um you can have you know 20 bridges in there if you guys would like uh, as long as it can fit within the geometry uh the size and the amount um definitely does not matter for you so Perfect. All right. Any questions on the temporary bridges? You can, you can tell my excitement gets up a little bit higher uh, when I talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I love how Kevin gets a little nerdy sometimes yeah. when he gets late. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
Kevin, I'm, I'm monitoring the uh, the questions. Uh, no questions so far, okay. but uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah. So now the next one is a simple angle um, to uh, or a simple corner is what they call it. Now this can be a straight line. Um, this can be a uh, zigzag line. Anything that we do basically just want to machine off the corner. Now this was actually developed uh, before we had the smart face technology where if we were to do this in pocket operation before, what we'd have to do is chain this and then we'd have to come back and mark open edges. Where this one, you don't have to do any of that. So we can just come in here, grab our face, hit the green check mark. It's automatically gonna pick up my line that I need machine to, as well as it's picking up the boundary. So even though that I didn't tell it the boundary, it is automatically looking at that boundary for you. So now we can grab our tool, as well as our levels. Like I said, with that smart face, it automatically picks up my levels, but if I want it to be fully associative, and that's how why it's uh, the color is green there, um, or in your guys' case, it may be red, but um, uh, as long as we've got color there, I know I'm fully associative. Now, uh, a couple different options here. So we can do multiple step downs or we can take it all in one pass. Um, here is our step over. So if we want a larger step over or a smaller step over, so 12 millimeter is about half inch. So we're using a half inch cutter or around about 0.47, but um, we're telling it that we can do a step over of 118. I'm just gonna kind of round that off to 100 thou. Now, if you guys do are using this as a, um, maybe as a roughing, and you guys can do climb cut and conventional cut, we can set it to zigzag. Let's just take a look at our pattern here. You can see it's coming down in there and doing a zigzag pattern, starting on the outside from the material and working its way in there. So like I said, it automatically, let me just do a top down view for you. It automatically knows that our tool diameter size and it wants to go 10% past. Um, we can set it up sort by passes or slices. We can set it up as well as doing, maybe we want to do a nice wall finish or you know doing a floor finish in there. Um, the nice thing that you can do in here is, let's say we started off with a zigzag and we want to leave five thou for, oops, for our, a finish tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm leaving five thou, but I'm not turning on my wall finish because I don't want to finish it with this tool. So, because that's my rougher. So we can save and calculate and we can make a copy here, and now it will do a wall finish for us as well. So coming in there and doing that wall finish, you can see that uh, tool path right here. So um, really nice to do. Um, if you wanna smooth out, let me go back to this operation right here. If we want to smooth out uh, sharp corners, um, we can do that as well. It's not, we don't have any sharp corners here because it's just a straight line, but if you did have a sm um, sharp corner in there, if we did like a kind of a, a V shape coming in here, instead of going there and doing those sharp corners, it would do nice smooth uh, transition points there for you. So a couple nice options there as well. So like I said, it's kind of simplified getting rid of um, any of the uh, extra stuff that's in there and it's that specific tool, just like in your toolbox or any of these tools in here, just like your toolbox, you have that uh, Phillips screwdriver and that Phillips screwdriver is good for, for one thing, but if you really want to take it, you can uh, use it to uh, whack your coworkers or whatever you guys need to do. <laughs> okay, now we'll get into broaching. So with broaching, it is a basically kind of like a cycle. Um, what it will do is it will lock your spindle or it will orientate your spindle and lock the spindle. And what it will do is you'll orientate your um, brooch in the direction that you want it. Now, 
uh, it's been asked, how do I set this up? Or I didn't know I could broach with my machine. Um, it's a special tool that you put in there. Um, usually you want a good, uh, good holder for this. And since my brooch is facing this way, how I used to do it is I would do my uh, spindle orientation and leave that brooch loose in there. And then I would come against a, a edge that is parallel with that and tighten it up by hand and then pull it out and crank it down tight and then put it back in the machine. So I know my brooch is in the, the correct orientation. That being said, what we can do here is grab our geometry So we want to broach that spot right there. And obviously we want to grab a broach. So I got one uh, predefined for you. Levels, how deep we want to go. So I want to go down to that face. We can set our upper level here. Oops, I got click happy. Now, All right, Kevin, yep. when you selected your geometry, it looks like you just selected the one line that was traveling in the direction that you wanted the brush to go. Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And you guys do have the choice if, you know, maybe I grab the other side. Well, then I would want, instead of the tool to be on the left side of that line, I would want it to be on the right side. So you do get the option as well as the center line because a lot of um, customers that, or I shouldn't say a lot of customers, but some of the customers that I used to deal with, they wouldn't actually physically draw the brooch in there. They would just draw in a center line of where they want that brooch to be. So at that point, you could just chain that little center line there and grab center right here. Now, how much to step over? Um, basically, how much do we want it to take per slice as it's coming down? Now, when uh, productivity came in and showed us this, it's like, there's no way um, it can do that. but these brooches are set up to do it the, the way they got the chip breaker on there. Uh, they do a phenomenal job, but depending on the material, um, you can go from large to small, but we can save and calculate here. Oops. And depending on machine as well. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you want to make sure your machine has the rigidity to take that kind of step over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you probably don't want to be doing uh 17 four stainless on a robo drill or something like along that lines. So. And I did mess you know, up here. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say too, you know, Kevin, I mean, there there are broaching tools that have, you know, multiple teeth and there, there are some that have single teeth as well. So, yeah, it obviously depends on, you know, the capability of that particular tool. Yep, yep. Does everybody in the uh, night class, um, have they seen a broach for the machine that goes in the spindle? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I just so want to make Costin, sure everybody knows yep. that we're what we're talking yeah. about here. Costin, yeah, Costin right. said he did. Sure. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, I think we should pull it up yeah, anyway for anybody we'll on up. YouTube. Yeah, that, yeah it's, uh, probably, it's not. It's not a bad idea because it it kind of yeah it would make sense for people to see that. It's almost like vertically sawing. It's a yeah. It's an interesting material so, removal process. Let's just go to images here. So here is. The brooch that I'm most familiar with. Jeepers, come on. I didn't mean to throw you off there, Kevin. No, you're <laughs> fine. Like I said, uh, try to get one that, all right, let me find a different one here. Um, well, it looks just like, here, I'll open up this guy in MSC. So all it is is a, a square brooch where these are a little bit of relieved uh, in the center here. Um, this one is actually set up for uh, through, to, through tool coolant uh, to kind of flush out chips. But basically all that's happening is coming in there. And if you guys were watching my fingers right now, you would see it. But uh, it's just kind of coming in there and slicing away a little bit by a little bit. So um, and what I mean by a little bit by a little bit is our step over. So if we come in here, and do save and calculate here, we can see that it is basically coming up there and just doing a straight plunge down on there. 
and just working its way over. And I can tell it that, all right, so for my retract, how much I want, or I can tell it to cut outside the slot. So for each, as it comes down, it's gonna fully extend out and then back up for you. So let's kind of see in solid verify what we're looking at here. So I've did a pocket operation. Um, my tool was able to fit just a little bit in there, but if we go ahead and let me turn off our holder. Try to get the best view for you guys here. So, so our first initial cut came in there. Oops, took my mouse cursor off. And it's coming all the way, retracting all the way out and just slowly working its way over into there and chewing it out. Until we have a, let me play it all the way through here, a fully uh, slot going out there. So um, another great feature um, to use, everything's kind of set up for you guys as well. Now, if your uh, machine does call out a specific uh, parameter or something like that, um, just let your post guy know that we need a maybe a, a special macro call out because um, I know some of these machines are set up to do broaching. Um, it's just a macro call out. So just uh, let us know on the, the post side of things. But like I said, all we're really doing is doing an M19 spindle orientation, locking that spindle and just doing basically an up down pattern and slowly working its way over. So, and kind of to Brendan's point, uh, we we're talking about with the um, temporary bridges. If we were to do this in an operation, um, without the toolbox cycle, we would have to manually draw all these lines and pick that as geometry or do it as um, drill points and come in there and come up and down, up and down. But this way it gives you the ability to fully extend back into the slot, outside the slot by a certain distance, or we can just tell it to move away by, you know, eight thou or one thou, move over and come and start back. So that can make, uh, any questions on the broaching from anyone? Okay. Oh, yep. You can also rough that slot with a small end mill before you're broaching. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what Kostin's saying is we can come in here with a smaller end mill and get majority of that material out of there. So it's not so much um, to do on there. Um, you know, if your machine isn't quite set up to do you know, a full width like that, um, you, Absolutely correct. So you can do a, um, a rest material on that pocket operation. And if we want, yes. Yeah, because the ultimate goal is to uh, have a tool path that would be able to mill those square corners there. Well, we just use a square end mill to end mill square corners, right? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Everybody, you, you know those sure. square end mills that they're selling now. So, so if I come back with a We'll add a three. Now, if the temporary bridges was your favorite toolbox cycle, I think that uh, broaching or uh, O-ring groove has got to be mine. <laughs> oh, the O-ring, definitely. Previous tool diameter was this one. So now I'm telling it that in that uh, pocket operation, I just want it to clean up that additional material that's there. So we'll go ahead and um, play this through. So now you can see we got a lot of that material out of there, but we still have those corners to get out. So now at that point, we wouldn't need to do the entire geometry for coming all the way in there. So if we wanted to modify that geometry for the broaching, we could come in here and under, uh, let me do a quick sketch. We just got that little line there. And we can grab that as our geometry. And I just need to switch up my levels here. And now it's not taking as many cuts coming in there. 
and I've, in that line we can put you know we could do a smart dimension on there and tell it you know um the distance there but i think you guys get what i'm uh, getting at there so is that can i help out Gaston too yeah, yeah i think really that's the power of uh, solidworks the integration there as well yeah yeah on yeah, the fly so you got uh, brooches that are changing in size i mean you can really make that line associative to the depth of your brooch and have the tool path automatically update yep absolutely yep no, exactly. And then, you know, having it automatically sort of recognize the depth that it needs to, you know, kind of chip away at in that brooch pattern. So, yeah, so it's not, yeah, yeah you're not going to be sitting there, you know, cutting air, yep. air, air, air all yep. the time. So, yep. yeah, it makes perfect yep. sense. And, then, you know, if we really wanted to fine tune this, if we go ahead and we'll just it's updating the stock right now. So, if I just do a single, step through let's get I missed the first pass so I can see if I can get my uh, turn off my holder here you can see I can shorten up that line even more so if I was really running something in high production then I could come in here and let's do edit sketch and you know right now we're at you know 80 thou we could do you know maybe it's just 25 thou that we need to come in there as a sketch, I'll grab this geometry. Oh, I got uh, levels. So now you can see, instead of doing, like Brendan was saying, instead of doing all that air cutting in there, now we're coming in there and basically just cleaning out that corner that's left over. So you can see that first initial cut took off just a little bit there, taking that second cut, third cut, and getting our square corner. So. Yeah, you know, and Kevin, I mean, that's, you know, that's obviously noteworthy because, you know, the fact that, you know, you just said it just took a couple of clicks to make that happen. You know, that's, you know, I think that kind of shows the, you know, the ease of use of, of, of the system as well. Yeah, yeah. And if, like, said before if you guys have any questions on any of these toolbox cycles definitely let me know but uh pretty cool stuff that's in here now this last one um is kind of a lead off from last week so last our last operation of the day was a slow lead in to a slot or roll into an open slot this is basically the same thing roll into a closed slot so there's not much um going on here um Go ahead and grab our geometry. And we'll just grab that same end mill levels. And now I can set up an approach distance. And like I said, this can be done in profile operation too, but then I have to kind of go through and fine tune all these different oper all these different parameters where using the uh, toolbox cycle, uh, we have a nice roll in and um, coming off. So if I just go ahead and save and calculate this, so you can see that nice roll in tool path and that tool is being centered and then coming straight out and doing a nice roll in as it's coming in the material. And this kind of would be very handy if um, this part was like case hardened. Um, so that first initial cut as that end mill is getting fully engaged in there, um, we don't want to, you know, just do a straight plunge in. Um, we're doing a nice arc um, feeding that in there as well. So, um, but that is it for the part two. Any questions from anybody? And we went a little bit late, but um, good yeah, stuff Kevin, in here. Yeah, uh, Kevin, it looks just yeah, it looks look, looks like just that one question from Costin, but um, you know we can we can keep it open for just a few more minutes if uh, if there are some questions. But uh, other than that, it looks like uh, that's about it. Yeah, and if you guys do run across other questions, um, I put my email address in the chat area for everyone, as well as if you guys do have ideas. Um, like I've always said, these night classes are um, just for you guys. So just let us know what you would like to see.
and we would love to show it for you as well as for those of you guys that are watching this on YouTube, um, my email is in the description below also. So definitely hit now, me up. I've got a small uh, redundant point, Kevin. Yep. But uh, everything that we've seen tonight is very mill-centric. But if you have a mill turn machine, these milling toolpaths still apply. Absolutely. So if you want to broach on a mill turn lathe, you can That's still utilize these tool paths and uh, do these types of uh, operations and on those types of machines. If you guys would like to kind of see that, um, Mark actually did one today with doing um, some doing splines and broaching on a mill turn machine on the solid cam live one right here. So um, definitely a good way to show it. But yeah. Definitely everything that is being shown, as long as your machine can do, um, you know, uh, has live tooling um, for all these can be done on mill turn as well as Swiss um, minus. I don't know if Swiss could do a brooch just if, if it could handle it, but. Um, oh, it can handle it. <laughs> coming from uh, our, uh, our uh, internal Swiss expert. So, yeah going from one extreme to the other we're on a simple mill all the way down to a uh, very high-tech advanced uh, Swiss machine so whatever you guys have we can handle it right maybe not at the step overs that uh, you're specifying but uh, yeah <laughs> tool paths translate <laughs> might, well, might want to take it a little slower but all right well I'll uh, I don't see anything else coming in so thank Gaston for uh, compliments and uh, just want to thank everyone for uh, attending the night class um, like I said before if you guys do have ideas going forward on these um, right now we're just kind of doing a refresh because last time we went over toolbox cycles was about four and a half years ago I think it was so there's some stuff that has changed in there and we'll just keep working our way through but uh, like I said if you guys do have questions definitely let us know how we can help you out and with that being said, I'll uh, sign off for here. And uh, if we don't talk to you in the meantime, we will talk to you guys next Tuesday night. Right, Sounds good. Everyone. Great job, Kevin. Appreciate it, as always. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Take care.